Hello, friends. We're just setting up. If you are here to learn about the three must do C section exercises, that's what we're talking about today. And we're going to get started. I am Jeanette Yi, perinatal athletic therapist. And it is Wednesday, not Monday, but we are still running a live workshop. And today's live workshop is about top three must do C section exercises or cesarean birth exercises. So if you are here to learn about what you need to do after major abdominal surgery from a healing standpoint and the exercises you can do to help yourself heal, you are in the right place. Now, typically I run these workshops on Mondays. Monday was a holiday here in Ontario. So for everybody who celebrated the long weekend, I hope you had a great one. Hello, TikTok. Hello, Instagram. And hello, YouTube. So we've got three platforms going on today. Friends, first, I want to know where you are in the world. And I want to know how many weeks postpartum you are. Okay, so please spend that moment. If this is the first time you're doing a workshop with me, drop that into the comments below. The reason why I want to know is because that's going to help me cater this live workshop to you. While I have exactly what I'm going to be talking about, I still want to know uh, all these details so I can be more specific in my feedback. Okay. So in the comments, write down where you are in the world, how many weeks postpartum you are. Instagram superstition cowgirls, eight weeks postpartum. You are in the right place because we're talking about early C-section exercises. Nay 19 is California, eight months. Welcome, mama. Welcome, welcome. You're still going to pick stuff up if you're a month or even years after cesarean especially if you've never done um, any specific cesarean exercises. So I'm going to tell you a little sneak preview as the answers roll in here as to where you are and where you are in terms of uh, postpartum. Um, everybody who's had a cesarean or C-section also has a diastasis to heal from. If you knew this fact, please drop a couple of hearts in the chat here or just a couple of hearts for a, your emoji. If you had a cesarean, you also have to heal from your diastasis. This is a fact I think a lot of people don't know. Oh, someone's calling in from South Africa on TikTok. Congratulations, six weeks postpartum. Thank you, thank you for, so much for tuning in. Look at all these people. Nepal, we have. The UK, we have. California, we have. Amazing, amazing. So TikTok, um, the first thing I need TikTok to know is that I need you to follow me on Instagram because I can engage much better with you here, especially if this is the first time together. Um, Ask Jeanette is my account. Please follow me there because I can answer your questions. DMing there is easier. I can send you resources in the DMs there and I can't do that on TikTok. It's very different. So TikTok, please follow me on Instagram. Ask Jeanette and, and I mean, Y'all here at the very beginning, but this entire workshop and all workshops I've done for the past year, years actually, are saved on Instagram. They're, they can't be saved on TikTok. So please make sure that you follow me on Instagram. Okay, so today's topic, top three must do cesarean birth or C-section exercises. Okay, why do we need to talk about this? So here's the number one reason as a perinatal athletic therapist, why this topic is so important to me. Most, most, not all, but most people I work with after they give birth, whether vaginal or by cesarean birth, are told by their healthcare practitioners at their six week discharge checkup, you're good to go, you're fully healed, you can go back to regular exercise and sex. Who got this message from their healthcare provider when they were discharged? Okay, give me a bunch of hands up because this is what happens in Canada, um, specifically on Ontario where I am. At the six week checkup, we are told, if obviously without infection or any you know, glaring issues, 
that we are discharged. You can go back to exercise and sex with no problems. Okay. Give me a bunch of hearts if this was you. Give me a bunch of hearts. I have a hands up here on Instagram. Yeah. So that was you, right? And TikTok. Yep. A lot of hearts are saying, yes, that's in fact me. That's what I experienced. So here's the thing. This is not a fact. Just because you don't feel pain, it doesn't mean you're better. Okay, so as an athletic therapist, you talk to any therapist, just because you get injured and you no longer feel pain, it doesn't mean you're fully healed at all. As a matter of fact, this is the time where athletes get re-injured. It's because they don't feel pain or much pain anymore, but they're not strong. Their muscles aren't moving correctly, which is different than strength, by the way. So for therapists, this is that kind of red flag zone where athletes self-discharge from care and they go, I'm just going to go back to exercising and going about my daily life and I'm going to be fine. That's not true. Okay. So the fact that you are here to learn about your C-section exercises is amazing. So let's talk about that. Okay. Usually moms don't say, oh, I really want to know about an exercise. Usually they go, um, can you take a look at my abs here? They're so floppy. Is this how it's going to be for the rest of my life? Right. Moms reach out to me and they go, Jeanette, this C-section shelf is not cool. I didn't sign up for this. I don't want my scar to look like this. I was told this is permanent. Is there anything I can do about that? Right. So maybe that's you as well. And another thing is, you know, just feeling weak. They're, they're going back to, I mean, let's face it. If you're, if you just gave birth, it's not like you're sitting around lounging around for the most part, you've got a baby to take care of sometimes more than one child. So you're feeling weak. It hurts to move or it's just straight up. It's I'm not moving right. I know I'm not moving right. Is this going to be my new normal? Right. These are the things people are scared of. So please drop into the comments what you are fearful of. What is it that you're concerned about when you're like, why are you here? Why are you like, I need to learn some exercises. Let me see. Pop into the comments here. I want to see why are you here? Why do you want to learn exercises? TikTok, you tell me why you want to learn exercises. Okay. Maybe you're like, I'm just curious. Maybe you're a birth worker. That's cool. But maybe you're like, I just had a cesarean. Like this mom here, that's six weeks postpartum. And she's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. So pop into the comments or put a bunch of hearts. If you're like, I want to learn some exercises. Okay. Shivnar 60 in Instagram. I need to get rid of my mom pouch and incontinence. Thank you for sharing that. Getting rid of the mom pouch and incontinence. So what you know, she might be also saying is that I want my core and my pelvic floor to work properly again, right? Amna here on Instagram is saying, I want to get rid of the C-section shelf, right? So what she might not be saying is the appearance of my scar and my belly isn't cool. That's not what I thought it would be like. Is there anything I can do about that? And the answer is the earlier you are, in your recovery, the answer is yeah. Usually there really is. I want to do exercises because I want to feel healthy. I gave birth to twins seven months ago, says somebody on TikTok. Absolutely. I'm 14 days postpartum C-section having right side pain, says another mom on TikTok. I'm four weeks postpartum and I just want to heal comfortable doing my daily activities. And that is incredible. Like, doesn't everybody want to be able to move around pain-free after giving birth? Like, this is very important. Amna also says on Instagram, I don't want the scar to explode when I try a VBAC. So she wants an optimal, like top of the line, full recovery from major abdominal surgery. Friends, these are all reasons why exercise is so important. So if you've been following along with me on Instagram or TikTok for all this time, I need you to know that, yeah, I always talk about something called C-section scar massage. Now, scar massage is hugely important, but it's only one of two parts of your recovery. The other part of your recovery that you must do are exercises, exercises. So friends, if you're just joining me on TikTok or Instagram, we're talking about my top three must 
do C-section exercises or cesarean birth exercises specifically early on. So if you're here and you're in the first couple of months postpartum, this is perfect for you. Okay. The way I teach cesarean rehabilitation, first of all, you can rehabilitate yourself easier than you think. The way I teach it is it takes five minutes a day. And in those five minutes minimum, by the way, of course, if you have more time, there's always more you can do. But five minutes every day will get you a really incredible recovery. One part of that five minute routine is scar massage. The other part is an exercise. Okay. Massage, movement, massage, movement. It's always like that. And as you, as you improve your exercises and your scar massages, they progress, meaning they change. I'm here to talk to you about not the scar massage part today, but the exercise part today. I see a lot of people on TikTok going, yes, this is good. Can I do this one week postpartum? Yes, TikTok. There's a couple of things that you can do at one week postpartum. And as I talk about these exercises, I will coach you through when it's safe and not safe, okay? Because that's a very, very good question. Okay, hopefully we'll have time at the end here for questions. I want to be able to get through this in 15 minutes. It probably ain't going to happen. Let's just be real here. But I really want all of you to get a really solid um, understanding of how simple it actually is to recover from your C-section or your cesarean. Um, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed anymore. And I want you to feel empowered to know you can actually do a ton just by yourself without seeing someone like me, a perinatal therapist. Okay. Now, first, um, before we get into those three must do C-section exercises, I want to model something I'm wearing. Okay. Does everybody see this? Okay. These are shorts. These are shorts but they're not regular shorts, right? Regular shorts would probably end right around here, around my hips. And if you're an early cesarean birth mom, these low riding shorts are gonna kind of irritate your scar. If your underwear is low riding too, it'll irritate your scar. So if you're in the first easily couple weeks, if not up to three months postpartum, I highly advise you get high-waisted underwear for comfort so that things don't sit right at your scar and also reinforce that C-section shelf appearance. Now, these shorts are called compression shorts. Okay, give me a bunch of hearts if you've used compression or if you're using an ab wrap, okay? So let's see, TikTok's like, yes, I'm using some compression shorts here. Okay, good, good. Yeah, bunch of hearts here. I see people are using compression. How about you on Instagram? Anybody using compression here? Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of hearts. Okay. So for those of you who aren't quite sure what compression is, by the way, I ran a huge workshop about compression, like ab wraps, compression garments, why, when, how long, what types, what to look for, um, two months ago. So if you haven't watched that workshop, it's in my Instagram. So please follow me on Instagram, ask Jeanette, it's the exact same um, handle on TikTok, okay? Follow me on Instagram because you, there's a lot to cover that I... I'm not going to focus on today. But the point is, if you're if you have a compression garment, please do your exercises in this garment. Why? Because it is um, protective, but it doesn't replace your abs. It doesn't replace your muscles, but it's protective. Why do we need protection when we go into new exercises? Because, well, one, kind of not too confident. You're trying new movements. You're not quite sure if it's going to hurt or not, right? But two, protection actually is exactly that. Your muscles have been cut open, right? Down that linea alba, right? Right down where that diastasis is. So if that's cut open and it's trying to heal, you want to wear something that's, it, this is like a brace. You're wearing a brace to kind of keep things um, with better mechanical advantage as you're trying to contract the very muscles that need to help heal this linea alba. And if they contract too much, it's going to pull a little bit too much on that linea alba and might cause soreness and pain. This adds another layer of um, error buffer. Do you know what I mean? You ever sprain an ankle? You put on an ankle brace, you go back to playing soccer. It's like, I can run around, right? Versus if I don't have the brace on, I'm not as confident. And it's like, oh, it actually kind of hurts when I run fast, right? So it gives you a little bit of an error buffer. This is temporary. 
okay? But it's important just to have this on hold, uh, of it, sorry, available to you when you are just starting new exercises, okay? I'm just looking at super quick questions here. Uh, I find that tight clothing over my scar makes my scar hurt less, says somebody on TikTok. Okay, amazing, amazing. So sometimes it's just tight clothing. Friends, this is a um, recovery garment by SRC Health. And I love this garment, but it's an investment. So not everybody has 160 Canadian dollars to invest in a garment, but I'm telling you, it's a life changer. It makes a massive difference in your recovery. You not only heal faster, but you heal better, okay? If you've never used one before, you can still heal. It just takes a bit longer, okay? That's all. All right, so first of three exercises. Friends, if you're just joining me, I'm Jeanette Yee, perinatal athletic therapist, and we are talking about the top three must-do early C-section exercises today. So you haven't missed a ton because I'm about to start exercise one, but this entire workshop is going to be saved on my Instagram. So TikTok and YouTube, you got to kind of follow me on Instagram here. It's Ask Jeanette. It's the exact same account name as TikTok. Let me grab my yoga block. So if you have a yoga block, please go ahead and grab that because, you know, we don't use too many pieces of equipment for rehab, but this is one of those things that is very, very helpful. Do you need a yoga block? No. What I usually say when I see uh, my moms in their homes for rehab is I go, do you have a pack of wipes? Because it's, it's this shape-ish and it's very high density, meaning it's hard to squeeze. Um, if not, just get creative, grab a ball, grab a really, you know, high density cushion. We're going to be squeezing this between our legs, but not just yet. First exercise, first exercise is called belly breathing. And if you haven't tried belly breathing yet, you can do this on day one after surgery. Nobody has said yet that they're day one post-surgery, but someone has said that they're week one post-surgery. So this, what I'm about to show you, is completely safe for after surgery, okay? Because why? Because you got to breathe. I mean, you don't stop breathing just because you had surgery. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this down so you can see what's going on. Okay. Belly breathing is connecting your brain to your muscles. It helps with swelling, pain, and that C-section shelf. How? Because when you take big, big belly breaths, it basically it moves all your scars. You've got three major ones, by the way, not just the one on the outside. It moves your scars. So it's like you're massaging your scars, but from the inside. So those of you who are new to my world and haven't attended another workshop, this is your first one. Scar massage is not cool. It's not safe in the first six weeks. Like don't be doing this in the first six weeks. You need those scars to actually seal properly and you don't want a risk of infection, okay? So if you can't actually massage your scar from the outside, belly breathing massages your scar from the inside. Give me a bunch of hearts if you've done scar massage. I think TikTok's like, I've done this. Oh, oh my gosh, TikTok, y'all are amazing. You're supporting one another. That's awesome. That's exactly what this is about. Instagram's like, yes, I've done this. Okay, so again, scar massages first. So if you are six weeks or after, right, you've been discharged by your doctor, do your scar massage first. We're not talking about scar massage in today's workshop. We're talking about the second part of your five minute routine, the movement or the exercise. In this case, the movement is belly breathing. So everybody put your hands on your belly like this. Your middle fingers are facing each other on the edges of your belly button. And when you inhale, you're going to let your belly just relax. And then when you exhale, you're going to draw your belly button in so that your fingertips touch. I'm gonna to come closer so you can see this, okay? Inhale, belly relaxes. Exhale over four seconds, belly slowly draws in so that your fingertips touch, or at the very least, come closer together. Try this out in real time, friends. Try this out, even if you're months postpartum, even if you're years postpartum, 
Why? Because this is part of diastasis rehab and every cesarean birth mom has a diastasis. This is part of pelvic floor rehab. If you have incontinence, somebody on Instagram said earlier, I have incontinence. This is going to help your incontinence, even if you're years postpartum. A lot of moms that I work with, even years postpartum, can't do this properly. But if you can start this on day one, this is huge. Okay, for those of you who've tried this, put into the comments. This is easy to do. What are you feeling? More importantly, when you exhale, can you feel your muscles contract, like draw in, like your inside abs are kind of squeezing in tight? And I'm saying inside abs, not outside abs. Like, look, my six pack is completely relaxed. This is literally, I'm going to go side view, let my belly hang and then drawing my belly in. Okay, let's see some comments here. How did everybody do? How did everybody do here? Okay, Shivnar is like, I'm just starting. Amazing Instagram. Anybody on TikTok start this? Can you show us one more time? Sure, I can, especially if you're just joining in. Friends, if you're just joining in, I'm Jeanette Yi, perinatal athletic therapist, and we are talking about the top three early C-section exercises that helps with recovery. The first is belly breathing. Let's see, Zorabora is like, I love it. Zorabora has been around for a while and you're following and you're doing all the work. So Zora is like, I have done this already. And it's helpful, right, Zora? It's helpful. For those who've done the belly breathing, please write in the comments for all the other moms to see. Why was it helpful? Did it help with pain? Did you feel more connected with your ab muscles so you can move with less pain? Did you notice a change in how your abs looked like they were less floppy? You were able to exercise better. Zora's like, yes, yes, I was. Can this be done standing or should we always be on knees? Oh, Tony, thank you so much for identifying that. I don't do it on your knees. I'm on my knees because I'm I'm demonstrating on three platforms. <laughs> I got to fit into the screen. Do this in four different positions. Sitting, standing, on all fours, and also lying on your back or even on your side. That's position number five. As a matter of fact, a lot of times, I'll, here's a hot tip. When I work with uh, early cesarean mom, uh, postpartum cesarean moms or postpartum vaginal moms, vaginal birth moms. One of the biggest things is this exhale and engaging that deep ab muscle called the transverse abdominis is very tough to do. It's been cut. You've been stretched for nine months. It's hard to connect this drawing in action to your brain. So lying on your side is actually a really great, great, great position to start with. So, oh my gosh, that was a great question. Thank you so much for asking that TikTok. How many times should we do the belly breathing? Five. Just five. Just five. And five is harder than it sounds because it's not hard for that muscle. It's hard for you to focus. It's hard for your brain. It's hard for your brain. Okay. So again, four seconds, slow inhale. Friends, I'm teaching you exactly what's in my cesarean recovery program. Okay. This is one of many exercises you want to be able to do, but this is where it starts. Okay. And then exhale over four seconds. You see how my fingers are coming closer together because I am drawing in my belly. With my hands away, it looks like this. Inhale, belly totally relax. Exhale, slowly belly draws in. Okay, let's move on. If you have questions, absolutely send them to me on Instagram via either the DMs or when I post this workshop, you can write them in the comments below this workshop post, okay? So TikTok and Instagram and everybody here, if you're just joining me, I'm Jeanette Yi, perinatal athletic therapist. And today's workshop, this week's workshop is about the top three must do exercises after C-section or a cesarean birth. Okay, so we just covered part one. If you missed it, this is being recorded and posted on my Instagram. So you have to follow me there. Ask Jeanette is my handle. Same exact same thing as on TikTok. Okay, now second one is wall planks. Okay, who's been told that planking is not safe after 
major abdominal surgery after giving birth, after being pregnant, who just like bunch of hearts, please. Cause I can't tell you how many moms I've worked with who've been told, or at least have read somewhere. It's not safe to do sit-ups and planks anymore. You're going to damage your abs. Who has been told that? I even have a bunch of questions in my current Instagram stories going, um, what exercises are safe and unsafe to do for my diastasis? And the answer is there are no unsafe exercises as long as you get your core functioning properly, okay? That's a different workshop altogether. That's my ABCs workshop. ABCs workshop, I talk about ABCs all the time. A stands for alignment. B stands for breathing. We just did breathing together, okay? And C stands for core control. So you gotta be able to get your core, which is your transverse pelvic floor and diaphragm coordinated as you move. So we're gonna apply that concept with a wall plank. So if your ABCs are dialed in, of course you can do planks. And actually, you should do planks. You should, you know what a plank is? You know what a plank is? A plank is bracing your abs, okay? It means this. Okay, very few of us are gonna be punched in the stomach, but many of us get kicked by our babies on the change table. You contract your abs to protect yourself. When else do you brace? When you sneeze, when you cough, when you laugh. So if you intend on doing any of those things again, you gotta learn to plank again. And of course, if you're going back to exercise, you have to plank, you have to plank. So let's do this together. If you grab your yoga block, please go ahead and grab one. Okay, let me just see if I can fit into the screen here. Oh, excellent. Take this, you're gonna squeeze it between your legs. This is a huge hack. Okay, I do this all the time. For anyone who is recovering from abdominal surgery, your inner thighs are actually really good friends with your abs. And for the therapists and body workers on the call here right now, your, ab, your hip adductors are synergistic muscle pairings with your rectus abdominis. So when you're trying to engage your, your these, if you squeeze this, it helps. And it's one less thing to think about. ABCs, alignment, right? So I'm standing with my top to tail in alignment. I'm breathing not into my tummy. I'm going to breathe into my lower ribs now. And my core is going to be on. And with the ABCs on, squeezing my block, I'm going to tip onto the wall. And I'm on my tiptoes. And my hands are at my shoulder height. Do you see how if you took me and pick me up off the ground and put me flat on my feet again, I'm just standing straight, right? So top to tail, that alignment is super important. I'm not arching my back. I'm not bumming the air. I don't have my head flopped down. I'm not hunching or anything, right? My entire alignment top, my bun to my toes are in a straight line. And then the next thing is I'm gonna breathe into my ribs and I'm gonna do that rib breathing or the, I call it the athletic breath, right? You always breathe into your ribs when you're athletic or exercising. And then your core stays on, okay? Just gently. And then you're squeezing that block. Here, folks, if you can't see that, I've got a block between my legs. So TikTok and Instagram, if you're just hopping in now, I'm talking about the top three exercises to do after a C-section. This is exercise number two. It's a wall plank which of course progresses into a countertop plank, into an elbow or your elevated plank, into a plank finally on the floor. Then you're doing push-ups, then you're doing burpees, right? So this is how things progress. Let me just check my time here. Oh my gosh, I barely have time for questions. But does that make sense? Does that like in your, in your heart and your mind, doesn't it make sense that, oh yeah, I should be able to brace in order to like function in everyday life. Like I shouldn't be afraid to do that. Does that make sense? Can I get a bunch of hearts if that makes sense? Okay. Ash was like, oh man, I felt that one. So pain-free please, Ashley. But if you felt it like, oh, I felt my ab muscles working in a good way. I'm happy for you. If it's like, oh, that, that hurts. It hurts my back. It hurts my scar. Then something is up. 
That's when you want to send me a direct message on Instagram. Be like, what's up? I tried this. It wasn't working. What do I need to do? Right. Or you connect with your perinatal therapist. If you're already working with one and be like, what is going on with my ABC? Something is not quite right. Okay. Ashley's like, yes to add muscles. Oh, good, Ashley. Nice Instagram or TikTok. That's good. So Tony wants to know how soon afterwards can we do the plank? You got to get your ABCs dialed first. So a wall plank, even though it's one of the first exercises I assign, you, I always teach my new mom how to do alignment, breathing, and core control first. That's always session number one when, when, um, when moms work with me. Okay. I'm just trying to see here on Instagram. What's up? Mikey B is in the house. What's going on? We got Carly here and Aaron. Okay. Let's see. Um, Let's see any other questions. Ab muscles. What if stomach is still pretty puffy at five weeks? Ask somebody on TikTok. Totally normal. I know it's frustrating because you're like, well, it's already been five weeks. But from a perinatal recovery perspective, it's only been five weeks. So um, slowly doesn't. You know, it took nine months to stretch you out into the shape that you were. So it's going to take some time to go back into a pre-pregnancy shape, like a non-pregnant shape is what I mean. So ABCs first and wall planks. So let me super quickly show you exercise number three, right? Like I'm not going to cut this short and not show you exercise number three. So if you're just joining me, my name is Jeanette Yi. I'm a perinatal athletic therapist. And today's or this week's workshop, we're talking about the top three early must do C-section exercises. We covered the first two, which is belly breathing and wall planks. The third one is, oh my gosh, let's see if I can do this. It's on the floor on your tummy. Okay, I need to know, write in the comments for all my cesarean birth moms. Let me just arrange this TikTok. Let me see. TikTok can get a couple of other phones in the way, but that's okay, as long as you see the mat. Write in the comments. Yes or no? Have you laid on your stomach yet? C-section moms in the comments, write down, yes, I've laid on my stomach. No, I haven't laid on my stomach. And if you're like, I don't know if I, sh if I should be. Listen, you can lay on your stomach by two weeks postpartum, like two weeks after surgery, even earlier, but a lot of people are in a lot of pain and not confident at all to lie in their tummies. So like, don't. But a lot of moms after C-section, they're like, I don't even think about lying on my stomach and it's been months. Okay. Yeah. Gotta lay in your stomach. Farisha is saying, yes, I've laid on my stomach. Courtney is like, yes, I've laid on my stomach. Who else? Let's see. No. Priscilla's like, no. Angela says, no, I haven't laid on my tummy. Reet hasn't yet. Nicole hasn't. Mashi says, yes, I have. Lauren's like, no, I haven't laid on my tummy yet. Okay, there is no, not yet since Tony. I'm, I'm only 48 hours postpartum. Okay, girl, don't lie in your stomach yet. <laughs> so Tony, don't do it. Tony, don't do it. <laughs> so what I'm about to show you is safe to do from a healing perspective, like your wound has closed by two weeks postpartum, but most people aren't comfortable doing it until like four weeks or past. And that's totally okay. Totally okay. Here's the exercise. Okay, you're going to line your stomach. So bare skin. So if I know I'm barely like in the picture here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lie back here so Instagram can kind of see me still. Okay, Instagram can see me. Okay, take to everyone can see me. Lying on your stomach is a must do exercise after cesarean. It helps with pain, swelling, and numbness. A lot of people don't know that you got to touch your belly skin to different textures and things in order for it to not be so darn numb anymore. Obviously it takes time and every body is different, but you've got to touch your skin to different textures, not just your hands, but to things like pressure of lying on your tummy. Okay. Now that's step one. So many of you haven't laid on your stomach. So I would just start here. Of course, I, I would say make it four weeks postpartum. Some moms are totally comfortable doing it earlier. Totally do it earlier. But if you haven't done it, start with this on your bed, not a mat, not the floor. It, sometimes it's a little scary. Start on your bed. But the exercise is a Superman. So I'm going to turn my head just so you all can hear me. But I mean, 
a Superman, of course, if you're a nursing mom, this could squash your breasts and be quite uncomfortable. So this is not for everybody, right? But you want, you can put a pillow underneath you, right? There are a few variations of this exercise, but palms down, turn your thumbs out. And similar to the plank, from top to tail, I'm in alignment, right? It's A, B, C's again. So alignment, I'm breathing into my lower ribs and my core is on, right? So I'm gently keeping my, my uh, belly button zipped up, right? And I'm breathing into my, my lower ribs. And I want to hold this for up to 10 athletic breaths. This is harder than it seems. Like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, Superman's whatever. Listen, you hold that for up to a minute, you will have a level of strength after abdominal surgery that most moms don't have. And by the way, your ab, your deep ab muscles go all the way around behind your back. It surrounds your entire torso. Most people don't do any of these Superman exercises. And the consequences are, so a lot of you are here because you know, like C-section shell, my abdominals don't look the way I want. Well, we got to strengthen the abdominals in all different positions and lying on your belly is absolutely one of those things that many moms miss, even years postpartum. So I just want to encourage everybody to know that, first of all, these are exercises you can easily do on your own. But if you're not sure, you got to ask, you got to ask, please don't be like, I'm going to guess, I'm going to, it hurts, I'm going to do it anyway. Don't do that. So if you have questions, send me a direct message on Instagram, okay? Inst TikTok, follow me on Instagram. Ask Jeanette is my handle. It's the same handle as on, um, on TikTok, but I can engage with you there. I can send you resources there. I can't do that on TikTok. The entire workshop this week and every week for the past year, all of them are on Instagram, okay? So that's part one. Part two is, an exercise is only one half of your five minute routine. The first half is yours, is your massage, your scar massage. And I've run a couple of scar massage workshops in the past few weeks. Scar massage, then exercise. In that order makes even more um, results. You can't just massage and not do anything else. You gotta massage and exercise. You gotta do the right exercise and the right massage. Okay, so Samology, if you're just joining me, how am I reducing my belly pouch after C-section? Massage and exercise. That's the answer. That's the first answer. There are a lot of other reasons why you may have a belly pouch, but if it's tight scar and it's abdominal musculature that is not connected to your brain, it's not strong, you gotta do the massage and the exercise. So here's the thing. If you're like, I, I need to do this, but I, I don't like, I wanna follow an actual program I need you to know that there is a program that after any other surgery on the human body, like a shoulder surgery or a knee surgery, you leave the surgery with a rehabilitation program that tells you every exercise you need to do, how to progress it every week, what you're doing, but we don't get one after C-section. So I created one. And if you are interested in following an actual program, where you know every single scar massage you got to do and every exercise you got to do for the duration of your recovery, which is about six to six to 12 months, let's be real, then follow me in my program, which is Cesarean Recovery Program. It's, it's as simple as that. Enroll in the Cesarean Recovery Program and you're going to have access to this entire program. It starts at $69 and you're going to get this program, print it out, press play, check out every single exercise. Okay. I also have a concierge program, which is one-on-one -on -one with me, but uh, enrollment is full for the month of August. So um, we're trying to see if there are openings available for September. All right, so we can chit chat about that on um, Instagram DMs if you are interested. But until then, I wanna say thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back here next Monday with another cesarean recovery topic. Uh, please know that you, are your body's best therapist. And I want you to be empowered to do the scar massage and the exercises. Okay. Thank you so much, friends. And I'll see you next week.